welcome to the last movie that's about all things you have to do before you start to paint. And of course this says a lot about how difficult or tricky really encaustic is that you have to have some knowledge before you plunge into this brilliant world of painting with encaustic. So let's talk about how to prepare your substrate before you're going to paint with encaustic. Well, I'm going to show you here some ordinary play wood and this is just brilliant to paint on, it's cheap and you can make it yourself home or your hobby like for me, it's done this for me, ordinary six millimeters pine play wood, brilliant to paint on and um, you can get it in different sizes, you can do it yourself as I said or maybe the local wood shop. And here's the other thing I talked about, ordinary cardboard. So these two things are the two things I recommend for you to start to paint on. But can you paint directly on the wood surface? Or do you have to do something before? Paint it with a ground? And encaustic or wax actually adhere perfect to simple wood. So you don't have to have a ground on it if you don't want to. But I'm going to show in this video if you want to have a ground and why. And if you want to start to paint with gossip, don't try to paint on glass or metallic and other surfaces. Just keep to the wood or to the paper and it will work just great. If you want to explore this further on, well, do that when you know a little bit more about encaustic and then you have more exciting things to look forward to. But if you see that the wood, of course, have a wooden color and maybe you want it white instead. So this is why you maybe want to paint it with a ground and that is why I'm going to explain what kind of ground can you use for encaustic. And this is of course mostly when you paint very thin so you can see the white ground behind it. It makes the colors shine a little bit more but if you have many layers don't use grounds. Now I want to show what kind of ground you can use. And I've been talking about this before. Always use oil colors with encaustic, never acrylic colors, right? So don't take any gesso you will find and use that as a ground like some kind of acrylic gesso. Never use that. But RNF, they are really brilliant in encaustic paint and they have made their own encaustic gesso. And the strange thing is that it's based on acrylic color. But RNF says that they're using a special recipe because the main thing about a ground for an acoustic is it's absorbent and acrylic color isn't absorbent. What will happen is it will be too slippery and well the wax will just peel off just as I show you here on my silicone mat and of course you don't want to happen that to your paintings, right? So use good gesso for encaustic painting. But as you can see this jar is very small and RNF products as brilliant as they are they're also very expensive and even more expensive to buy here in Europe. So I was thinking is it magic in this bottle or is there some kind of trick that I can actually find out? And I'm not just an artist, I'm also a teacher, an art and science teacher actually. So I thought, this is just simple chemistry. They have done something to the acrylic color that is not that difficult to understand. So I did my own little research project and it really was great because it was published in All Things Encaustic, which is a great blog, so please visit it. And I want to explain what I did. I took ordinary acrylic paint or acrylic gesso and mixed it with calcium carbonate or called marble dust also. What this is, it's just a very simple product that you use as fillers in oil colors and other colors. You can also use it when painting when you want some more structure, but it's also absorbent. So you can buy this in any art shop at all. So mix the calcium carbonate with the acrylic color and you, wow, got the magic from the RNF encaustic gesso. Maybe that's not exactly their recipe, but this recipe really works. I have tried it and a lot of different artists have tried it as well. So take 30% calcium carbonate and 60% acrylic color and just mix that and you've got the best ground you can ever have for encaustic. But as I said before, I prefer to actually paint directly on the wood. Now, 
if I don't do that, I actually don't use the acrylic gesso. I don't like the thought and the idea of that because wax is a natural product and so is oil color. It's made from mostly linseed oil, which is an eatable oil, but of course don't eat the oil paint. Uh, and everything else I use is natural, so why just use plastic on all this? Uh, doesn't my soul don't like this? So I use something different. I use a casein gesso. And casein is from milk, so it's absolutely natural. You can use um, a chalk ground also. Both those things are absorbent and works great for encaustic. I use this from uh, Sinopia, which is a great um, brand because it's just natural products. So be careful not to use something that looks like a chalk ground, but it's made from acrylic colors. So be careful. Careful what you choose for your ground when you're making encaustic. But of course, art is about experimenting, finding new ways, breaking rules, and making it your way, of course. But be careful knowing the rules before you break them, so you don't uh, well end up with a really disaster, or just make a disaster and you will learn from that. So, besides wood, you can also use cardboard. And that was the two things I have just shown to you. But maybe it's so that you want to glue some paper on the wood. Well, say you have painted something in watercolor and you want to have that on your wooden panel. Then you have to have a glue that is really good, you know, because all your painting is hanging on that glue. So what kind of glue can you use to glue your paper on the wooden panel? And there are mostly two kinds of glues that are really good for this and I'm going to show you them right here. I took two kinds of paper and tried them and here you can see the result. Uh, just ordinary PVA glue is very useful. You can use it to all kinds of stuff but you can see the paper is a little bit wrinkled so it's kind of wet and it's good glue if the paper is kind of stiff. But then you can use the other thing, and that is acrylic matte super heavy gel. And it doesn't contain so much liquid, so the paper doesn't get so wrinkled. So I can really recommend the acrylic heavy gel for papers that are a little bit thinner. Well, that was that about grounds, and I think I have covered the most of the facts and essential things about starting with encaustic. Now, 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 this is the fun part. Next video, we are starting to paint.